And we are live here on DVC Vikings Live, 20 minutes on the clock, and we've got some starting announcements on the floor. We've got a matchup between Contra Costa College and Diablo Valley College. We'll start with the visitors. Contra Costa College comes in 0-5. They've had a tough streak to start the game. They played in a tournament, and the last game was against LA Southwest. That was an 87-71 final. And this team, despite the fact that they are 0-5, I mean, they played some really close games. A 73-71 loss against Butte, a 77-73 loss against Siskiyous, and then a couple double-digit losses in some games that were very close, going down to the wire against COS, who was hosting the tournament, as well as LA Southwest, and that was the last matchup. The head coach of the Contra Costa Comets is Miguel Johnson, and his starting lineup is Mikey Pierce. Joseph Gold at point guard, Christoph Sanders a forward, and another forward, Devin McLean, and the last guard is Jamil Harris. On the other side for the Vikings, the Vikings come to this one on a one-game winning streak as they defeated Solano College at Solano College to get their second win of the season. They're currently 2-3, and three, led by Irv Anderson in his fourth year, 34-28 and 28 overall, and he's looking to continue to move in the right direction. Vikings are 1-0 at home, 1-1 and one away on the road so things are looking good so far in this homestand going as they defeated the College of the Redwoods here on DVC Vikings Live 86-72 last time around they had a, a few tough games against some really difficult foes against San Jose City College and West Hills Coalinga both those games the Vikings were in it in the first half and squandered it away in the second half so the Vikings looking to put together four or pardon me two strong halves in this case and push it forward to be a, uh, a 500 team going into this after the sixth game of the season. So for the Vikings, the starters will be a guard forward in number one, Marshawn Smith, the freshman out of West Branch, East Palo Alto, one of the most athletic players on the floor for the Vikings, time in, time out. At another forward, it'll be Cole Webster, the for, uh, freshman out of LA Premier Prep. Ben Teas will be running the shooting guard position, the 6'2", 185 sophomore from across the street over at College Park. Vinny Hurtado will have the keys to the car. He will be the point guard as the sophomore from Clayton Valley Charter School will be the, the second guard on the floor for the Vikings. And then finally, the big man inside, Michael Wood out of Las Lomas. He will be the center on the floor. Last time around, it was a very close game, but it was mostly because of fouling. 26 total free throws made by Solano College, and that was the 82 to 88 final that the Vikings won. And we'll get a tip off here in the middle of the floor. Sanders the Ford alongside, it's Cole Webster taking the jump. 6-8 versus, I believe, 6-6. Six, six. Ball is up, tip is good, and it goes into the hands of Wood. And the Vikings working right to left. They'll be wearing their gray uniforms with the green trim and the green numerals. They'll start up the set with Vinny Hurtado. Hurtado jumps inside the lane, passes to the corner. It's a three-point shot. Teas leaves it short. Offensive rebound brought in by Michael Wood. And a foul on the floor. This one will go against the Comets. And the first foul will go against the man that was in the middle just a moment ago. Sanders picks it up. So at the 19.46 minute mark, Vikings will inbound it from the left side of the baseline. It's Ben Teas over to Wood. Top of the key, Wood will pass over to Vinny Hurtado. Hurtado scans the floor from the left wing. Underhand shovel over to Teas, and now Hurtado has it. Steps up, a deep baseline jumper, and Vinny Hurtado has the first points of the game. Two to zero, the Vikings lead at the 19.30 mark here in the first. Working left to right are the Comets here, and they'll be in their blue uniforms with the blue tops, blue bottoms, the baby blue trim, and the baby blue numerals. Handling right now is Sanders. Passes back over to Gould, and Gould feeds inside. A 12-foot floater from inside the lane. That one was missed by Sanders, and now Vinny running right to left on the floor. Micah Wood between the legs. And a kick ball. Ball will stay with the Vikings here at the 9.03 minute mark. Last time around, some of the premier scores. Lorenzo Pardo had 15 points. He's currently on the bench, not a part of the starting unit currently. Looking for a jolt off the bench. And Hurtado will inbound it over to the other man who had 15 points. And Ben Teas behind the back. Fancy dribbling, spinning inside the lane. And he's fouled as he gets the shot up. Second foul on the Comets. And this is something they didn't necessarily do too often last game against LA Southwest. So Ben Teas takes the free throw line for his first attempts. An 85% free throw shooter on the year. The left elbow is taped up. He's been having some troubles in this early going. You know, take a dribble. 
Going up with the form. First points for Dip. Ben Tejas comes from the free throw line. But going back to that performance, four for 10 from the floor, three for seven from beyond the arc, and he was four for five from the line. The foul went against Jamil Harris as well. Second free throw up and good. Two for two for Ben Tejas. And we've got a four to zero game here at the 8.55 mark. Driving right inside of the post and a very nice finish alongside the glass was Joseph Gould. Just used his size with a slight advantage over Vinny Hurtado. Got in the paint and got it going. Ben Tejas now has it for the left wing. And an off the ball foul against the Vikings. This one goes against Michael Wood. That'll be his first and the Vikings first. Shot clock needs to be reset here. Currently 4-2 at the 18-40 mark. And Elijah Keyes will get his first playing time here. Keyes not getting the start, but man, was he a menace. 7-7 seven for seven last game with a double-double. 14 points, 11 rebounds. Keyes is just such a strong activity guy underneath, and he brings that chaos to the floor for the Vikings. Man to man across the board for the Vikings. And a travel. First turnover goes against Joseph Gould. And he's averaging 1.8 per game. Leading assist man as the point guard. Having 2.5 per game. So the turnover will bring it back over to the Vikings. Five on the floor for the Vikings will be Webster, Tejas, alongside Keys and Vinny Hurtado, and Marshawn Smith. Smith has it from the left wing. He nearly slips with his fire red kicks. Behind the back dribble, goes straight to the baseline. A 15-footer left too strong, tipped up in the air and brought in by Jamil Harris. Harris trying to go coast to coast. Harris almost loses the ball as he goes inside the left wing. Now gets it back over to Gold. Gold will take a deep breath here at the 22 second mark. Passes over to Sanders. Sanders from the top of the key. Finds a man underneath the basket. Wide open, goes up the foul and it's good. Devin McLean got inside the paint. He was left all alone. Cole Webster was contemplating whether or not to foul him underneath the basket. And then it Eventually, the double clutch will result in the foul and the bucket good to go. Tied up at four currently as Lorenzo Pardo checks in, replacing Marshawn Smith. And let's see if the Comets can get the first lead of the game here as the free throw is up and good. Devin McLean, 70% free throw shooter, but he's one for one tonight. Five to four is the lead for the Comets coming in 0 and five. Turning over the ball is Hurtado. Gets the steal is Gold. Gold. Tracing back around to the perimeter. A cross court pass over to the right corner. That's over to Harris. Harris from the right wing. And a stoppage in the action by the officials here. And I believe it will be a foul against the Vikings. Two fouls across the board at the 17-31 minute mark. And Hurtado will get a breather as Kai Curry checks in. Pardon me, that is Moselle Wilson, the freshman out of Ignacio Valley. Hercules is own. Five to four, the lead. Sideline inbound here. And the inbound for McLean goes over to Sanders. Sanders to gold, gold between the circles to start the set. Sanders, tap of the keys, guarded by keys. 15 seconds left, underhand shovel over to gold. Gold doesn't take the three, instead gets inside a 15 footer from the left wing. And gold has four points. He's the leading scorer currently with the 7-4 game, 17-11 remaining. Moselle Wilson running the second set here. And he's working right to left from the far wing. Hand off over to Pardo. Pardo steps into a three-point shot. High arcing shot, leaves it short. Rebound brought in by McLean. McLean cherry picking ahead over to Pierce. And Pierce with the one-handed hammer. Pierce the leading score for the comments at 16 points per game. And it's a hot start for the comments as they've got the 9-4 lead at the 16.57 mark here in the first half of play, back on the other side of the break here on DVC Vikings Live.
first buzzer rings and we'll bring the broadcast back here a 9-4 game as the Comets of Contra Costa College lead the Vikings of DVC 9-4 to start the game. Vikings went off on a 4-0 start and since then it's been all Comets. A rotation on the floor as the Vikings bring two bigs. It's Keys alongside Michael Wood, Moselle Wilson, Lorenzo Pardo and Ben Tay is the fifth man on the floor. A full court press for the Comets here as Lorenzo Pardo will bring it up the floor. Between the legs of the dribble as he crosses midcourt with 24 seconds left. Finding a threading, Tejas, and Tejas with the slash in the bucket. Tejas showing more than just an outside shooter's look there as Pierce has the ball 15 footer from the right side of the baseline, and he's money. Four points for the leading score ready. A 21 point performance last time around. Moselle Wilson in this 11 to six game will shovel over to Lorenzo Pardo and getting a little overzealous. The first foul against Mikey Pierce will be called the freshman guard. Michael Wood to the sideline to inbound it and a substitution for the Comets for the first time. Christoph Sanders to the bench. Incoming number 32, that's Avon Watts. And a three-point shot. I didn't quite see who it was, but it's an 11 to eight game. That was a two-point shot. 11 to eight now. It's a three-point game as the Vikings just got the last bucket on the inbounds. Gold over the baseline, the 15-footer once again by Pierce. And the ball went into the hands of Keys, but he had his pocket pick there underneath the basket. 32 on 32 crime. Great action by Watts, who just checked in the game. And a jump ball possession arrow will stay with the Comets. Substitutions as well, as we'll get you the five on the floor. Kimborough on the floor for the first time alongside Pierce, Watts, McLean, and the last one is Jamil Harris, the starter still on the floor. Left side of the baseline will be inbounded by Kimborough, who just checks into the game. 15-58 remaining in this 11-8 game here in the first half. It'll be Kimbrough handling the ball. Left wing looking for a man to hand off. Good ball denial by Lorenzo Pardo. And in a frantic, he throws the ball over to Watts and then Watts wasn't quite ready for it. A turnover by Watts. Watts the leading rebounder in the game for the Comets so far, averaging 4.5 rebounds per game, and you can see exactly why. He is just so aggressive on those boards. He had two offensive rebounds in the last game, and he's got two already as he fought hard underneath the post with Elijah Keys. Ben Tejas passes back over to Moselle Wilson, and Wilson driving the baseline, drops it off to Keys, and Keys with an easy bucket. That's his first points. 5.6 rebounds per game, 6.6 .6 points per game. Elijah Keyes, just a very valuable tool for this Vikings team as they cut the lead back down 11 to 10. And too easy of a bucket for Mikey Pierce as he's got six points now, extending lead back out to three. 15.05 remaining here as the Vikings drive right to left. Last time around, Mikey Pierce just had a wide open lane. Vikings just a little slow in the defensive rotation as Ben Tejas has the ball from the left wing. Tejas dribbling with the right hand, avoids getting the steal instead of feet inside. Keys leaves it short, tipped off, and it's a Mikey Pierce with a rebound. A good looking attempt, but no good on the finish. Other side of the baskets, it's Watts who misses the shot, the other 32. Elijah Keys with the rebound, pushing quickly ahead. Pump fakes from three is Pardo, and Pardo foul driving the baseline. The call will go against number 32. That will be Avalon Watts, the freshman forward. Substitutions for the Vikings as Marshawn Smith alongside Cole Webster and I believe Kai Curry will come in as well. Replacing Ben Tejas, Michael Wood, and Moselle Wilson. Inbounds pass over to Keys. It will be Kai Curry handling the ball in this third unit. I mean, you can't necessarily call it a third unit because they play almost equal amounts of time. Kai Curry passes to Smith. Smith with a jab step and a travel. Marshawn Smith, you want to see him slashing the lane, getting real aggressive. But if he's handling from the top of the key, you can't, can't move those feet too much. 13 to 10 the game here at the 14 18 minute mark. Main ball handler in the second unit for the Comets is Kimbrough. Kimbrough 
throws a shoulder into Curry, clearing some space, right elbow, overhand pass. He'll go over to Pierce. Mikey Pierce gets Marshawn Smith jumping, and the right hand shot from point blank range, no good, as the rebound is brought in by Cole Webster, tallest man on the floor at 6'8". Ty Curry over to Pardo. Marshawn Smith rotates to the corner. Webster for three, side of the iron miss, brought in by Kimbrough. Kimbrough quickly down the floor, and the Vikings defense able to get set up in time. 13.42 remaining, dropping off across the basket. Ball tipped out of bounds, goes against, or last touch, I should say, against the Vikings. The blue, it's number 10, Joseph Gold, Gold coming into the game, replacing Mikey Pierce. And it looks like Vinny Hurtado will come in as well in replacement of Elijah Keyes. So a little bit of a smaller unit here. Marshawn Smith, the, the second tallest player on the floor at 6'4", Cole Webster at 6'8". Inbounds pass inside the lob. And the ball goes over to the point guard as Gold has six points now. Averaging eight points per game. And he's almost at that moment, or at that mark, I should say, at the 13-28 minute mark. And I believe the shot clock should have reset. It didn't do that, so we'll get a stoppage of action. And the inbounds will be right in front of us on the baseline. Vikings with a three-guard look here. And the man running the set will be Kai Curry. Kai Curry, quite an athletic guard. Brother plays, or I should say play, but does gymnastics over at Cal. Marshawn Smith didn't quite leave his feet, so there's no travel there. Spin inside, a left-handed hook shot. Smith leaves it short, rebounded by Webster. Webster has the shot blocked. Quickly pushing ahead, it's Kimbrough. Kimbrough turning around, left wing, no three-point shot taken. Instead, resetting is McLean. McLean to Sanders. Back over to left wing, it's Kimbrough. Kimbrough, baseline drive once more. Kimbrough clearing some space, and he is fouled on the shot attempt. Kai Curry picking up his first. That'll be the third foul against the Vikings here in this 15 to 10 game at the 12:51 minute mark. Four fouls on Contra Costa College, three fouls on the Vikings, and going to the free throw line to shoot free throws is Zane Kimbrough, the freshman guard, averaging 9.8 points per game. First free throws up and good as Kimbrough makes his first. Kimbrough a 78% free throw shooter. And so if you look at the scouting record across the board, you get a few different scores that do the majority of the scoring. It's Harris, Kimbrough alongside Pierce. Pierce doubling nearly everybody else as the second free throw is up and good for Kimbrough. So two free throws up and good, and it's a seven-point lead for the Comets here, 17 to 10. Checking in for the first time is Prime Payton as well. Finding Teas, who just coming back, came back into the game, and a turnover on Marshawn Smith. Quickly down the floor, Gould kicks it out to the corner with Pierce who just come back in. Pierce able to keep his feet along the baseline. A right wing three, no good. Rebound brought in, but stolen away. Gould got the rebound, Hurtado with the steal. Quickly on the other side, a terrific up and under, Kai Curry. That breaks a little bit of a run that Contra Costa was on and it makes it 17 to 12 here with 12 10 remaining. A timeout taken by the comments. And it's Mikey Pierce calling the timeout, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on there. Didn't come from the, uh, from the head coach and Miguel Johnson, and it's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here as well. Let's give you some of the point totals across the board. Ben Tay is the leading scorer for the Vikings. He's got four points. And Mikey Pierce on the other side is joined alongside Joseph Gold. They both got six points apiece. The others, McLean and Kimbrough with two apiece. And we were talking about this just a moment ago on the last break. The game is going to come down to rebounding and fouling. The Vikings did a terrific job rebounding. They got 48 rebounds the last game out against Solano College. But the issue was just the amount of fouls. I mean, 30 total free throw attempts taken by Solano College. That is just way too high of a number. You cannot be doing that, and you cannot be turning the ball over at the rate that the Vikings have been turning it over this year. 16.4 turnovers a game in comparison to the 12.4 points per or, uh, assist per game, I should say. And now a new unit on the floor for the Vikings. It's Curry alongside Hurtado, joined by Webster. Coming in for the first time this game, DJ Evans and Ben Tejas. Behind the back for Payton. Payton. Passes into the lane, it's Pierce, has the ball stolen away, stolen away by Kai Curry. Kai Curry making the last nice basket, it's Hurtado over to Webster. Webster transition three, no good, goes right into the bread bucket of, I believe that's 24, Kim Morrow. 
A stoppage in the action here as Avalon Watts had some good playing time early on. The foul will go against Kai Curry. Oh, pardon me, it'll be the first against DJ Evans, the sophomore out of Boardman, Ohio. And in replacement, Devin McLean comes back in. So for the comments, Mikey Pierce checks out. It'll be 30, Jamil Harris with Devin McLean. Uh, Sanders with Gould, and the last man on the floor is Payton. 18 seconds left on the shot clock here, 17 to 12 with 11.30 remaining. Underhand pass to Harris. Harris goes inside of the paint, 12 feet away from the basket. He's denied the basket, and he has it turned over. Ball flies in the air, and ricochets into the hands of Curry. Five seconds left for the Vikings to be able to cross midcourt line, and it's DJ Evans in his fire pink sneakers able to cross the line. He's got the light pink on the top and the hot pink on the bottom. This Vikings team really likes to wear that color pink on their sneakers. Meaning Hurtado leads the charge usually, but he's got the whites on today. Underhand shovel over to Evans. Evans for three, way too strong. That one didn't even hit the uh, the iron. It just went straight off the backboard. Peyton to the hoop. Peyton with the nice reverse. Peyton only averaging 2.8 points per game, but he's shown some nice ball movement and has really opened up some opportunities for the Comets here in this early going here. 19 to 12, the score at the 10, 35 minute mark. And Kai Curry working on the near sideline. Bente is from NBA range, leaves it just a little short as it goes off the side of the iron. Brought in by McLean. Quickly ahead over to Payton. Payton straight to the basket once again. The right-handed shot. It's blocked met at the summit by Webster. Hurtado pushes ahead. It's DJ Evans cutting inside the lane. Spun around straight away three. Doesn't take it instead. A reload. And Tejas, oh, everything but the basket. Offense, our defensive rebound, but it was stolen away once more. Hurtado with the steal, and it drops it off to Webster as Webster gets an easy basket for his first points. Two points for Webster there, and a terrific job so far. Two steals by Hurtado in a very similar situation to what we just saw. Turnaround jumper, no good. McLean misses it. Rebound brought in by Tejas. Tejas. Stops on the DVC Vikings midcourt logo. And now will be a deep two-point shot taken by Webster. Webster misses it strong. Harris, a perfect drop off over to Gold. And Gold's got eight points. Close to double digits here in this seven-point game. 21 to 14 here at the 9-21 minute mark. Four people at the scores table for the Vikings here. Trying to get one more score out of this unit right here at the 9.08 minute mark. And a foul instead coming out was Christoph Sanders. He got a foul on the very first play of the game and he picks up his second here at the 9.06 minute mark of the first half. So bigger lineup look for DVC now. In comes Mosel Wilson, Hurtado will stay on the floor. Tristan Redman, the freshman out of Berkeley, or the redshirt freshman out of Berkeley comes in alongside Michael Wood and Lorenzo Pardo. Redman from the far sideline will throw it into the backcourt over to Moselle Wilson, who will run it here. Between the circles with 15 seconds left on the shot clock in the seven-point game, Michael Wood from the left elbow passes over to Pardo. A deep three from Pardo, and it rims out. And held in by Gold, who throws ahead quickly. Another drop-up pass over to Pierce, and Pierce has it blocked, but too much contact on the body. Wood, in his limited minutes tonight, picks up his second foul. This one will be a shooting foul, sending Pierce to the line. Hasn't missed a free throw shot this year, 100% from the line. 8.45, it's still 21 to 14. Looks like this Vikings team is just a little slow getting back on defense tonight as Contra Costa is running a little faster than them, and that's the good old broadcaster's jinx there as Mikey Pierce misses his first free throw of the season. Allison coming in, replacing Joseph Gould. And the second free throw attempt now from Mikey Pierce. Still a seven point game. Second free throw, nothing but net. And he's got seven points on the evening. Moselle Wilson, a little bit of a loose handle, but was able to shuffle over to Redmond. Redmond from 18 feet out, curls out. Man, the rim has not been kind to the Vikings so far tonight. Offensive rebound brought in by Moselle Wilson, and Wilson will draw the foul on the shooting attempt. The freshman guard who just checked in the game, Caleb Allison, 
He's been a productive scorer for Contra Costa this year. 9.5 points per game. He had 13, and he was 3 for 6 from beyond the arc. We haven't seen him on offense so far, but instead on defense, fouls. Back of the iron, miss. Moselle Wilson, a 70% free throw shooter, misses the first. Harris is deep on the other side of the floor as Vinny Hurtado has to retract to cover him and the second free throw is up and good. Moselle Wilson splits the free throws. He's one of two from the line and it's a 22 to 15 game here at the 825 minute mark. Working left or right, Allison has the ball. A feed inside, that's over to Watts. Watts spun around, denied the ball, gets it over to Pierce. Pierce leaves it short from the 14 foot jumper and Redmond able to corral it in. Lob over ahead, that's over to Hurtado, bring it across the midcourt line and now from the left wing. He drives inside and tried to drop it off over to Redmond from the baseline, but instead it's tipped out of bounds. Contra Costa was inside the passing lanes and the Vikings with 20 seconds left on the shot clock will inbound it from the left side of the baseline. Overhand pass, almost like a receiver bringing in the deep ball was Pardo as Pardo dishes back over to Moselle Wilson, leaves it short once more. A hard rebound brought in by Redmond, but Redmond looking for contact, didn't get the whistle. Instead, a push ahead and an easy basket for Jamil Harris. Two points for him on the evening. It's a nine-point game. This rim has not favored the Vikings so far. Maybe it's a little tight. Maybe the turkey is still in the system for the Vikings players as they're just a touch sluggish in this early going. A three-point shot from the left wing, an air ball by Vinny Hurtado. Hurtado, not much of an outside shooter this season at 20%. An insult to injury, flying through the lane. Avalon Watts gets the basket and one. Hurtado picks up his first. 11-point lead now for the comments as they are looking to get their first win of the season here. And Avalon Watts goes to the free throw line to see if he can dot the eye on the three-point play. Elijah Keyes comes back in the game alongside Marshawn Smith. So we will give you a reset of the lineup here. It'll be Kai Curry at point guard alongside Moselle Wilson, two point guards on the floor with Ben Tears, Marshawn Smith, and Elijah Keyes. Free throw is up and good. And three points now for Avalon Watts as he's able to get the three point play done the old school way. It's a 12 point lead here for the Comets. Marshawn Smith will be the one to bring it up the floor. Some nice handles, but he slips and turns the ball over. Turnover will go to Contra Costa. Cleaning the toes off his shoes is Marshawn Smith, as we've seen him slip a couple different times this early afternoon. A timeout on the floor, and we'll take it as well. CCC takes the third timeout, and they have the advantage 27 to 15 here, 12 point lead for the rival school in the 4 CD. Back on the other side of the break here on DVC Vikings Live. Twenty-seven to fifteen in this sluggish game for the Vikings here. A bunch of turnovers and a bunch of fouls in this early going. Six fouls apiece. One away from the single bonus at the seven ten minute mark here. McLean spinning inside a lane, dropping off into the corner. A three point shot taken and missed by Harris. Rebound brought in by the Vikings, and it's Kai Curry quickly down the floor. Kai Curry fouled alongside the arc, and he'll send Kai Curry to the free throw line. To shoot two free throws, only a 50% free throw shooter on the year so far. It's a very early season for the 5'10", 170 freshman out of American Canyon. One and one opportunity now for Kai Curry. 
Substitution for the Comets as well as Caleb Allison takes to the bench in replacement of the starter, Joseph Gold. Gold alongside McLean, Mikey Pierce, Alvin Watts, and the first free throw is missed out. The last person on the floor is Jamal Harris. Jamil Harris, I should say. And the free throw was missed by Kai Curry. But instead, the ball will stay with the Vikings. Quickly inbounding over to Tejas. Ball's missed, tipped up. Trying to get the put back was Marshawn Smith, but it's tipped out of bounds. Last touched by CCC. Ben Tejas unable to find the range from deep in this early going. Two points from the free throw line, one point slashing to the rack in this early going. Another inbounds by Curry. Eyes down the floor, flips it over to Keyes. Keyes has it from the top of the key. Back over to Curry, and Curry's fouled once more. This is the eighth team foul, so two away from the double bonus. And Curry just missed his first of the one and ones. We'll have another opportunity to make it right. It's a 12 point lead for the Comets in this early going as they've been running the floor faster than the Vikings have. First free throw up and good. And that's three points now for Curry. Has the opportunity to go to the line once more for the second of the one and one. Lowers the knees, flicks the wrist. And Curry with four points now. Two for three from the free throw line. A trap in the backcourt by the Vikings and it almost worked, but it looks like Marshawn Smith just reached in. That'll be the seventh foul, so it will send Joseph Gold to the one and one opportunity. So I like the attempt of really just trying to steal away a possession there, but just the execution was just a touch too sloppy. Substitution here for the comments. In comes Amari Robinson, the freshman guard for the first time. He replaces Jamel Harris. And the first of the one and one trying to extend the double digit lead, 27 to 17. Rimmed out, Keys was there. The ball's tipped out of bounds. Last touch by CCC. Keys went up to fight for the rebound. Amari Robinson with the freshest legs on the floor as he's getting his first playing time tonight. Had that ball tipped out of bounds. From the corner side of the far sideline, it'll be Marshawn Smith passing in a Curry, and Curry is quickly trapped. Two men in front of him, and another foul. No, it's a turnover, a travel by Curry. Curry turns the ball over, so taking a page right out of the Irv Anderson book was Miguel Johnson, and Johnson springs a trap, forces a turnover. Once again, execution going the direction of the comments in this early going. Gold with the handle, stops his dribble, a bounce pass over to Watts. Watts with the pink kicks himself, driving the left side of the baseline, contact, but no call on the offensive foul, and instead, trying to save the ball was Robinson, stolen away by Keyes. An athletic paint play straight to the hoop by Kai Curry. Six points. Curry is the leading scorer of the Vikings now, as it's an eight-point game. Six minutes remaining here in the first half of play. Eight fouls on Contra Costo, seven fouls on the Vikings. Both teams in the single bonus. Gold to an open man alongside the left wing, and it's missed by McLean. Fighting for the rebound once more, and it will go back to the Vikings. Last touch by Contra Costa. And now for the first time, number 15, the sophomore Jelani Clark. If I'm not mistaken, this is Jelani Clark's first game of the season. Hasn't gotten any burn up to this point. And the inbounds pass over to Curry as he sprints down the middle of the floor. Curry trapped inside the air. Keyes was there to bail him out. A straightaway three. And finally, Ben Teas knocks down the triple. He's got seven points, and it's back to a five-point game, 27-22. Pierce has it from the short right wing. He'll back it back outside. Throwing between the circles over to Gould. Gould with the left-handed dribble. Trying to get past Marshawn Smith. A drop off to the corner. It's over to Clark, and Clark swishes the deep ball. Three points for Clark coming in. His first 
field goal attempt of the season was a triple, and he's 100% from beyond the arc. A reverse driving down the lane was Marshawn Smith, left it short, and a foul on Moselle Wilson as he fouls Mikey Pierce. That'll be the eighth on the Vikings in this eight point game. Moselle Wilson picks up his first. And now one for one on the night so far was Mikey Pierce. Picked up a foul and he's got seven points. He was 100% from the free throw line coming into this game. Missed one in this early going. And now he'll see if he can get the first. First free throw missed again. One for two on the evening as Moselle Wilson is able to come away with the rebound. Wilson on the D of the DVC Vikings midcourt logo with an eight point lead for the Comets here as they try to pick up their first win of the season. Vikings looking to remain perfect on their homestand and a turnover is not gonna help that. Stolen away by Gold as it was just a loose handle by Wilson. Try to get it over to Smith, and instead, a straightaway three taken on the other side of the floor. Two for two, it's to Lonnie Clark. Talk about some found money. 11 point lead. Cole Webster checking back in the game, will spin alongside the baseline, and he's fouled. First team foul, on, or first foul, I should say, on Jelani Clark. And it's the ninth. So one and one opportunity going to the line is Cole Webster. It's been sloppy and you expect that after a lot of time off. The last time Contra Costa College played was on the 17th and the last time the Vikings played was on the 15th. So a 10 day break for the Vikings as they had Thanksgiving and all those festivities going on. And an eight day break for Contra Costa College. Webster to the free throw line for the first of the one and one here. First free throw, nothing but net. Cole Webster, three points here as he's one for one from the line. And the five on the floor for the Vikings. Vinny Hurtado, Ben Teas, Cole Webster, Marshawn Smith, and Elijah Keyes. On the other side, it's Gold alongside McLean. Peyton as the second free throw's up and good. Two for two as Cole Webster has four now. And now uh, Clark alongside Pierce in the last man on the floor was Prime Peyton. Peyton, a cross-court pass that goes back over to Clark. And Clark doesn't take a three this time around. Instead, the main ball handler is Gold as he has the ball picked away for a moment. And a backcourt violation called against Joseph Gold. Miguel Johnson's at midcourt yelling at the officials saying, hey, the ball was tipped, but it looked like it might have just been off the fingertips. Just the pressure of Marshall Smith on the ball forcing the turnover. And instead, Miguel Johnson will get his way. Irv Anderson, irate now, talking to the officials. The ball was tipped, so there is no backcourt violation. And in this nine-point game at the 3.56-minute mark, Contra Costa College still has the ball. Inbounding him from midcourt, McLean. And let's see if maybe we got a technical. A technical call on 21, I believe. Clock reset to oh no, a clock reset to 21. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I'm like, 21 isn't even on the floor for either team. Instead, a rotation of the inbounders. Prime Payton coming to midcourt to inbound it instead of McLean. And so now all the, <laughs> all the extracurriculars taking place right now, and we'll finally get back to play. Peyton inbounds it, goes over to Gold, and he's pestered once again by Marshawn Smith. Man-to-man -man defense across for the DVC Vikings. Pump fix went three, instead McLean inside of the paint. McLean fouled, and I believe the foul will be on the floor, not on the shot, so the ninth on the Vikings. And instead of an opportunity to go shoot an and one, it will be an opportunity to go for a one and one. Elijah Keyes picks up his first. He's with two fouls in the last game in his double-double performance against Solano College. And now a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Devin McLean. First free throw is up and good. All his points have come from the line so far this evening as he's three for three. 7.8. 
points per game, and he's also a 70% free throw shooter. As the statistic is no longer true here, his percentage is going up four for four from the line so far. Then you hear Tato running the set once again, the starting point guard for the Vikings in this 11 point deficit. A lob inside over to Keyes. Keyes with some patience, and Keyes gets the basket to go. A nice feed over to Keyes inside. And now at the 26 second mark, a pass goes into the Comet side of the floor. I should say the DVC basket side of the floor now. Payton, a feed inside that goes over to McLean. McLean pestered inside of the post. McLean goes up and he's blocked. A, fa a flat footed block by Marshawn Smith as he swats the ball down. And now Payton Prime checks out. In comes Jamel Harris. Inbounding it will be Jelani Clark. Clark came in and he's two for two from me on the arc. Now at the 310 minute mark here in this first half. It'll be Gold continuing to handle. Top of the key, doesn't take the shot. And it's back over to Harris. And Harris with the deep two-point shot as the shot clock expired. Will miss it. Hurtado with the rebound. Pushes the head over to Benteas, who fires away from the left wing. Benteas finally gets his game going. Ten points for Teas here as he cuts it back down to single digits. Nine points, Teas making his last two three-point shots. 240 remaining. Marshawn Smith, on-ball defender once again against Gold. And stand a straightaway three, and the three-point shot from McLean is up in good. Seven points for him. His first points from beyond the charity stripe. Back to a, a nine-point game. Cole Webster inside, throws up the shot, and an offensive foul. Jelani Clark draws the charge. Webster with his second. And that is the 10th against the Vikings, so the double bonus for the last two minutes and 19 seconds for Contra Costa College. Cole Webster will take a seat here as he has two fouls. So a three guard unit, I should say a four, yeah, a three guard unit here as Kai Curry comes to replace him. Curry hurt Tato, and the ball's tipped off off the fingertips of Pierce, and that's a turnover against the Comets. So inbounding it from the baseline just to the right of us, that would be Vinny Hurtado. So it's Hurtado alongside Curry, Tez, Keys, and Smith, the last man on the floor. 2-10, counting down. Curry on the ball. Hands off over to Tez, and Tez with the quick fire. Three, leaves it short, tipped up in the air, and it goes straight over to Harris. Harris on the two-on-one. Instead, Harris keeps it. Harris with a nice finish. A nifty finish to the rack. Faked the pass, got the basket. And Ben Teyes couldn't do much as he was the lone defender back there. And Teyes takes a hard spill onto the floor. He'll get the shot off. It'll be the 10th team foul against CCC. But two shots coming regardless as it's a shooting foul as Ben Teyes earns another trip to the stripe. 11 point lead for the Comets here. Vikings trying to cut it down to nine at the halftime break. Lorenzo Pardo to the scores table for the Vikings. Tay is two for two from the line so far in this early evening. Takes a deep breath and the form is up and good for the third attempt. 11 points now for Ben Tayas. Lorenzo Pardo comes in as Vinny Hurtado will go see the trainer. So something's going on with Vinny Hurtado. Fortunately for the Vikings, a lot of guards on this roster. Tez able to go two for two from the line on this trip. He's four for four on the game, and he's got 12 points. He's the leading scorer of the game. Nine-point lead for the Comets. A turnover. Tez gets the steal. Tez pushes down the floor, spins around, goes up, and he's blocked straight at the rack. McLean read that ball perfectly, and Tez was blocked. Ball will stay with the Vikings here, and Lorenzo Pardo and his line groom kicks will be the one to inbound it from the sideline. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Bounce pass back over to Tejas. Tejas, the sophomore from College Park, gets back inside. It looks like he might have been fouled, but instead Tejas comes up holding his hip. A nice rebound by Marshawn Smith as Smith gets the putback. Those are Marshawn Smith's first points of the game. Good to see Tejas get back up. He was holding his hip after the hard spill. 1.15 remaining, baseline. Pass inside over to Watts, and Watts with the finish. Watts got five points with a beautiful setup from Pierce. It's 
Still a nine point game, Michael Wood and Hurtado. No, Hurtado will not go to the, the table and said it's Michael Wood there. Inside of one minute to play. Nine point game, Marshawn Smith slings the ball over to Keyes. Keyes with the 15 footer and the free throw line jumper for Elijah Keyes is up and good. Six point for Keyes. The other 32, Watts has the ball. Flings ahead over to Harris, and Harris with the cross-court pass over to McLean. McLean to the corner, it's Pierce. Pierce drives the baseline. Pierce goes up, up and under, gets the basket to go, and one. Mikey Pierce, nine points. He's one for two from the line, or pardon me, one for three from the line, as the bigger unit will come in for the last 33.4 seconds for the Vikings. Marshawn Smith will take a seat alongside Keyes, so the two forwards are replaced. In comes Michael Wood and Cole Webster. So four outside shooters, or I should say three outside shooters as Kai Curry hasn't taken an outside shot tonight, or this season, I should say. And some more substitutions as Prime Peyton comes back in. So Peyton, Watts with Harris, Gold, and the last person on the floor for the comments is Pierce, who has really struggled from the line, able to get that one to drop to make it a 10-point game once more. Mikey Pierce, two for four from the floor, and he's got 10 points now. About a three-second shot clock, game clock difference, so the Vikings will hold the ball down and possibly get the last shot. Swiping away on the ball is Harris. Curry spins alongside the left wing, passes over to Pardo. Pardo with five seconds left on the shot clock. Driving down the lane, Pardo goes up and he's blocked. Offensive rebound goes to Michael Wood, but not a shot attempt off. CCC will have it with 1.9 seconds remaining. And a terrific job so far. Three blocks already for Avalon Watts. He came in with no blocks in this early going, so now a defensive substitution of the unit as Michael Wood and Cole Webster comes off. It's Moselle Wilson alongside Marshawn Smith. Curry, and the ball's intercepted by Tejas. Tejas with the deep shot. And Tejas from 40 feet couldn't get the drop. And we have a deficit of 10 for the Vikings. 45 to 35 in a sloppy first half of play. The Vikings fought back a couple different times to cut it down to single digits. But the outside shooting of the Comets has been great so far alongside the activity, really. It's been the Comets running down the floor, beating the Vikings over into the paint and really just cherry picking on a few different possessions. The Comets have come out and they said, hey, we are sick of losing 0-5 on the year. And this is a very good looking team as they go into the halftime break with the double digit lead. So with that, we'll take a timeout as well. 45 to 35 our score as we've got our rivalry in the 4CD. 45-35 once more for the comments over the Vikings in this early going as the Vikings look to defend their undefeated home streak here. 1-0 and get back to 500 on the year. But we've got a little bit of a break in front of us before we get that second half of action. So 14-11 remaining. We'll be back on the other side of the halftime break here on DVC Vikings Live.
There's about 30 seconds left here. Brian Crow, our camera person, coming over to the camera, so he'll get you some of the action on the floor in just a moment. But let's get you updated with some of the scores across the board. Going top to bottom for the Comets first, it's Mikey Pierce leading the way with 10 points. Brian Payton has two, Gold has eight. Some found money by Jelani Clark, the sophomore guard in his first game back. He's got two three-point sh uh, three shots. He's two for two from beyond the arc. Alongside eight from McLean, two from Kimbrough, four from Harris, and Watts has five alongside three blocks as well. Uh, for the Vikings, it'll be two points for Marshawn Smith, six points for Kai Curry, four points for Cole Webster, one point for Mo Wilson, uh, 14 points for Benteas leading the game and scoring, two points for Vinny Hurtado, and then finally six points for Elijah Keys. Both. I mean, really, every single one of the bigs for the Vikings is in foul trouble in this early going. Two on Keys, two on Wood, and two on Webster. So that's going to be something interesting that the Vikings have to work towards. Flip the sides of the floor so the Vikings will have the ball first. Working left to right, it'll be Vinny Hurtado alongside Elijah Keys, Cole Webster, Lorenzo Pardo, and Ben Teas, who has the ball now here as we start the set. Hurtado trapped inside of the corner. Underhand shovel over to Teas, and now Pardo has it between the circles. 15 seconds left on the shot clock as Vinny Hurtado will swing it over to the corner. It's a three-point shot taken by Pardo. Pardo unable to find the range. Hurtado, great activity, misses the putback. Instead, it's over to Cole Webster, and Cole Webster misses it. Hurtado with the offensive rebound. Third opportunity on the drive here, and the floater is no good for Ben Teas. Lorenzo Pardo able to throw it off of the legs of Gould. And activity is probably what they preach in the halftime break. The Vikings were slow coming out of the gate, resulting in a lot of cherry pick points. And now four opportunities at this point now for the Vikings in the opening possession. Lorenzo Pardo with 22 seconds left on the shot clock after three offensive rebounds on this first possession. No foul called on Pierce as he got the body into Pardo. Instead, Teas driving the baseline, drops it off. Keys lets one man drive by and a travel. Oh. Tough one, Keys just a little too much cha-cha on his play. He did such a good job just waving the Comets defenders past him, but just had a little bit of a shuffle of a step before that moment. Still a 10-point lead. As Harris into the game, will drop it off underneath a basket, and the ball goes into the hands of Sanders, and Sanders gets his first point of the game. Two points as he extends the lead out to 12. Lorenzo Pardo from the left wing. A lob inside over to Keys. Keys goes up, one-handed shot, and it's good. Basket and the foul, and Keys goes to the free throw line. The foul will be called against 21. That'll be Kristoff for Sanders. That's his third, if that's on 21. No, it's not. Instead, it's the second on Devin McLean, number 22. Elijah Keys, one for two so far in this early going of the season from the line. And Keyes with a good form, but it's a little too strong. Rebounded in by McLean. Quickly going right to left. Straight to the hole. It's Gold who has 10. So Gold alongside Pierce Harris. And the last two is McLean and... A defensive foul called against the last man and Sanders as they'll send Lorenzo Pardo to the line. Pardo cut down into the basket. And it looks like Sanders was inside of the restricted area. So that will be the third on Sanders. And Lorenzo Pardo will try to cut it back down to 10 here. First free throw is good for Lorenzo Pardo. And Pardo, surprisingly enough, averages 10.4 points per game, but that'll be his first points of the game. He's had some opportunities to go up there and get some baskets, but just hasn't really found his stroke so far. Hopefully, they'll get awakened on this free throw line. Two for two from the line, Lorenzo Pardo, able to cut it back down to 10, and a substitution as Watts comes in, replacing Sanders. 10-point game as the Vikings have their back against the ropes here at the 18-14 minute mark here of the second half of play. A turnover, nope. Able to retrieve it before it goes out of bounds as Harris. 10 seconds left on the shot clock here. Harris driving to the baseline. Harris with the one-handed shot off the glass, and it caroms in. 
Jamil Harris with six points. Vinny Hurtado looking to answer here. 17.52 remaining. Tejas from the left wing. Tejas strokes the three. Ben Tejas with 17. Vikings aren't able to get back on defense. Instead, an opportunity to get straight to the hole is Gold, and Gold has been doing that all night long. 12 points, and about six or eight of them have been on the opportunity where the Vikings are just slow to get back on defense. A three-point shot for Tejas leaves it short. Ball drips out of bounds, and it'll be an 11-point lead for the comments, and they will have the ball inbounding from the right side of the baseline. Elijah Keys to the bench. In comes Michael Wood. So a big for a big substitution. And the inbounds pass goes over to Gould. Blue jerseys, blue bottoms with the baby blue trim for the Comets working right to left. Corner doesn't take a three, instead a drive straight to the hole. And Jamil Harris and company are absolutely dominating the paint up to this point. A 13-point lead for the Comets as they extend their halftime lead by three. And we've got a break in the action on the floor. We'll take it as well here. 55-42 at the 17.02 mark of the second half of play. Vikings trail the Comets and this four CD rivalry here on DVC Vikings Live. Seventeen oh two remaining here in the second half of play, and it's a 13-point lead for the Comets of Contra Costa College. Cole Webster comes back into the game, so it's Webster alongside Hurtado, Pardo, Wood, and Tejas. Those are the five on the floor, driving left to right for the Vikings. They're in their gray jerseys with the gray bottoms, green trim, and the green numerals. Ball stolen away, stolen by Watts. Watts goes straight to the hole, and a foul by Pardo. Powell on a very... Or, a very hard foul on Lorenzo Pardo. Or, I mean, that was just a, a good thing that wasn't a flagrant foul. A break ahead after the turnover, Watts went straight to the hole. He was thrown down by a shoulder, and it's good to see him be able to get his legs back under him, and he'll go to the free throw line and shoot too. Marshawn Smith to the scorer's table. First free throw is missed by Watts. He was one for one. Prior to this, so as Lorenzo Pardo picks up his first, he'll take a seat on the bench. Some more size coming in for Marshawn Smith at 6'4. Second free throws up and good. One of two on the drive, and he's got six points. Hurtado quickly down the floor. Hurtado is fouled from outside of the arc. He was getting inside and he was caught up by Harris. Harris got his hands on the shoulder and a quick whistle by the official. Three fouls against Contra Costa College. This is something that we saw them not do very much against Solano, or pardon me, against LA Southwest. They got into the double bonus in the first half and they've got three at the 16-37 mark here in the second half. Vikings need to start being aggressive and see if they can earn their money from the line. That'll help them a lot as they trail by 14. And Bentea shooting threes will help, but he misses on that attempt. And Watts gets the carom. Watts quickly down the near sideline. Watts underhand pass off of the Comets. Devin McLean was tied up alongside Cole Webster. And Cole Webster able to force the turnover. Marshawn Smith to inbound it from the left side of the baseline. Hurtado here as a three-quarter court pressure is sprung on by the Comets. It's a little bit of a shell here as it's just one-on-one -on -one man to man coverage by Jamil Harris alongside Hurtado. And a stolen ball away. Harris on the steal. Tejas with the turnover. 
And an offensive foul called against Harris. I wasn't sure if Ben Teas was able to get there in time, but Jamel Harris will pick up his third. Ben Teas with the good hustle being able to get back on the offense or on the defensive assignment after turning the ball over on offense. And it's still a 14 point game here at the 16.02 minute mark. Vikings have had some issues closing out games in the second half in this early going as the ball's lofted ahead over to Marshawn Smith. And the Vikings need to play comeback here in the second half. Ball's thrown over the head of Cole Webster. And that ball was thrown about seven feet by Vinny Hurtado as he tried to feed the wing over to his big man. And instead a turnover on the Vikings. Don't have a number on turnovers so far, but the Vikings have got to be in double digits in this 15-50 mark here in the second half. Too many turnovers. That's been the issue alongside quite a bit of fouls and just not getting back on defense. That is a recipe for disaster for the Vikings. Turnaround mid-range jumper, no good. That is missed by McLean, rebounded in by Wood. Teas quickly down the floor. Teas spinning around the arc. Teas to the hoop. And a nice flip shot right at the basket. Teas has 19. The outside shot isn't dropping. Go back inside and give yourself a refresh. 12-point lead for the Comets. Balls over to Pierce. Pierce spinning inside the lane. Pierce, no contact called on the body bump, and Pierce still gets the basket to go. He's averaging 16 points per game, and he's got 12 now. Marshawn Smith, a tough defender, as the ball is lofted ahead over into the hands of Webster. Webster, the 15-footer, Jay, and Webster gets his sixth point of the game. Cole Webster showing the nice fadeaway game. Gold, the primary bull handler for this Comets team, has it, passes back over to Pierce. Pierce, a handoff over to Peyton. Brian Peyton will defer to Watts. Big man on big man, Watts at the top of the key, a handoff over to Gold. Gold, from the right elbow extended, pass to the wing. McLean doesn't take the three, instead gets inside on Michael Wood, and Wood gets the foul, or gets the block, but a foul in the process. And I believe it's actually going to go against Ben Teas. Teas might have been called on the reach in before the block attempt from Michael Wood. So the shooting foul will go to Devin McLean. Teas picks up his first. High arcing free throw shot is made by McLean. He's got nine. And he is perfect from the line. A perfect five of five. Cole Webster, Hurtado to the bench. So the five on the floor for the Vikings after a, another rotation here. Mo Wilson, DJ Evans, Kai Curry, Ben Teas, and Michael Wood will stay in. On the other side, it is McLean still at the free throw line for a second attempt as he is able to strike the second. He's six for six from the line so far, and he's got double digits at 10. So it is 24 Kimbrell alongside McLean as Mo Wilson is pressured here, a reach and called against Kimbrough, but it's Kimbrough, Watts, McLean with Prime Payton, and the last man on the floor is Pierce. Fifth foul against CCC at the 14-25 minute mark here, and the Vikings are two away for the single bonus here. This will help them out a lot if they can continue to get it. The bigs are in foul trouble here as Mo Wilson able to find the range from deep, but steps out of bounds before the opportunity. Another turnover on the Vikings, and that one just hurts. 14 point lead for the Comets. Kimbrough running the set here in the second unit. He's defended by Curry. Able to cross the midcourt stripe at the 23 second mark. McLean shovels to Pierce. Pierce from the left wing, he's defended by DJ Evans. Right wing, 15 foot jumper, gets the contact and the basket. Mikey Pierce is a walking bucket. He'll go to line to shoot the and one. It looked like good defense by DJ Evans as he stood his ground, got his hand up in the facility. But maybe just a little bit of an acting job by Mikey Pierce getting his way to the line. 62-46 Vikings trailing. Contra Costa College. Free throws up and good. Mikey Pierce, three for four as he's got 15 points. Viking Dean need an answer badly. Tied up is Curry. 
And a timeout called by the Vikings here. They saw Curry trapped up. The possession arrow will go back over to the Comet. So in a very important possession, the Vikings will take the timeout here at the 1357 mark. 63-46, the Comets leading the Vikings here in the second half of play. Five fouls on the Comets, three on DVC. On DVC Vikings Live. Tristan Redmond to the scorer's table for the Vikings. So another big coming onto the floor for the Vikes. Five on the floor remains the same at the 1357 mark. And before Redmond can get in, Vikings will run an offensive play with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. Throwing it into the backcourt over to Kai Curry. Curry sprints ahead, getting past the midcourt stripe. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. He will handle from the left wing. The baseline, the drop off, the weave, and a nice play underneath the basket, setting up Mo Wilson. And the Vikings get a very well needed score. 15 point game here as the Comets lead the Vikings at the 13 35 minute mark. Zane Kimbrough dribbling with the right hand, driving down the right side of the lane, the drop off to Peyton. Peyton doesn't take the three. Good defense here by DJ Evans. Has the ball knocked away for just a moment. Evans forcing him to the baseline, the trap underneath the basket, the reach in, and do we get a jump ball? I believe we do, a jump ball forced by Michael Wood. Just a good two-man game and good two men on defense by DJ Evans alongside Michael Wood. I do not see the, I do not see the possession arrow flip, so I think the ball might have just been knocked out of bounds off of a Vikings player. So Redmond comes in and he will replace DJ Evans, who just did a good job on defense last time around. And in comes Jelani Clark, the sophomore guard. First game of the season for him. And he's really been a nice addition back into this Comets team as they try to get their first victory of the season, 0-5 currently. We've seen it all day long in college football and we're seeing it here. It doesn't matter what the records are. A rivalry game is a rivalry game and both teams will play extremely hard. Kimbrough and the Comets seem to want it more so far and the ball's knocked out of bounds with one second left on the shot clock. Jelani Clark had it and it was knocked away by Wood. So at one second left, maybe a lob attempt right at the basket. Throw ahead, it goes over to Pierce. Pierce unable to get a shot off. A good 30 seconds of defense by the Vikings and company. By Wood and company, I should say. And Wood has really been a part of all three attempts at the basket there. Redman to Curry, and Curry will wave his left hand as he calls the set, bringing it up the floor. 13.07 remaining, 15 point lead for the Comets. Curry straight to the hole, and one! Kai Curry flies through the sky and he'll get a trip to the line. Comets are in disbelief that they did not get the offensive foul called against the Vikings. It'll be the first one called against Prime Payton. And Watts will get replaced in by Sanders. Sanders has three fouls. And Kai Curry. Looking to make it a 12 point game here as the extra free throw shot is good. Nine points for the freshman out of American Canyon. 12 point game here at the 12.58 minute mark. Vikings trying to cut it down to single digits as they are pushing hard on defense. Kimbrough handling Mo Wilson on the defensive assignment. Dreads are shaken by Wilson as he looks around the court. Jelani Clark loses the handle. Woods there on defense. Jelani Clark not called for the travel. Tries to thread it underneath. Five seconds left. And a double dribble. Christoph Sanders has not had a good night so far. The sophomore forward for the Comets. He's got a bunch of fouls and he's got a turnover on the last attempt there on the double dribble. Coming back into the game, replacing Peyton Prime is Joseph Gould. Half-court pressure and a reach-in foul called against Jelani Clark. And instead, I think they're calling it on seven. There's no seven. 
and we'll go against Clark. That's his second, and that is the seventh foul. There you go. Never doubt John Brown. He's a Hall of Famer for a reason. And this is a very good position to be in. We were talking about this all second half. Opportunity for a one and one opportunity, yes. You gotta knock down the free throws though as Kai Curry unable to do so. Seven fouls on the Comets. A jump pass over to Kimbrough. And Kimbrough from the short right wing will bring it back out between the circles. Ben Teas is there on the man-to-man -man assignment. Calling for a screen, gets the screen and the switch. Redmond retreats back into the post. A three-point shot taken by number 15. That was Clark. And he is two for three from the on the arc as Teas gets the board and quickly rushes down the floor. The 15-footer from the left elbow misses it. Rebounded by Sanders. Quick shots on the board by the Vikings. And they need a bunch of quick possessions here. And they need some stops as they get a stop as Pierce misses the mid-range jumper. 11.44 remaining in this 12-point game. Curry hit, gets up a deep shot, or a late shot, I should say, as it's a 14-foot jumper and a foul on the floor underneath the basket as it was rebounded in by Jelani Clark. It'll be the fourth team foul called against, I think, they said it's on Hurtado. Hurtado's not on the floor, so we'll wait for the scoreboard to update before we get you a uh, heads up on who the player was. No update on the board, so a undisclosed foul so far. And a foul underneath the basket by Redman as a nice drop-off pass went over to Sanders underneath the basket. He went up looking to dunk it down with two hands in authority, but a good foul making him earn it from the stripe as Tristan Redman there. Christopher Sanders, perfect from the free throw line so far this year. He's got two opportunities to knock it down here. First free throw is good, and that'll be his first free throw of the game. Sanders has three points. Finney Hurtado replacing Ben Teas. Some more ball handling on the court. It's a three-guard look, and on paper, it's three point guards on the floor. 11.27 remaining here. Second free throw attempt is up. And man, that big man has a nice stroke from the line. Four points for him. You can see why he's 100% from the free throw line. The ball is up ahead, and it's stolen away. Intercepted by Harris. Harris straight to the hole. Harris with a nice kiss off the glass to get 10 points. Averages 9.5 per game. And he extends the lead back out to 16. 11.05 remaining. Curry is fouled on the reach in once more. Jamel Harris, if that is on him, it'll be his fourth. Foul is charged to 30. Jamel Harris, that's his fourth personal. Fourth foul on Harris, so he'll have to take to the bench. And a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Kai Curry. Prime Payton will come in in replacement of the freshman guard, Jamil Harris. And a one-on-one -on -one opportunity once more by Curry. If I'm not mistaken, two for five on the night so far for Curry from the line and able to make it 50%. 67-52 at the 11 minute mark. Eight fouls against the Comets. Eleven points now in the evening for Curry as he is. Three or four for seven. 14 point game. It was a 10 point deficit at the halftime break, so the Comets with a plus four advantage here. It's been a lot of action inside of the paint, resulting in that. And that's partially due to the fact that so many different Vikings bigs have had a couple different fouls for the majority of the game. And a foul again. This one will go against Michael Wood. He jumped up, got caught in the air and fell right on top of one of the Comets players. It will not be a shooting foul, as that's only the sixth foul. So as Michael Wood falls on top of Christopher Sanders, a replacement will come in. So the two bigs on the floor for the Vikings will be replaced by another two bigs. And it's Marshawn Smith and Cole Curry coming back in. A drop-off 
Back over to Sanders. Sanders on Cole Webster on defense. Trying to work the reverse and he steps out of bounds. Good defense by Cole Webster. Just using his hips to force him to the baseline and force some sloppy footwork for a guy that's not really had much success tonight. 10.33 remaining. Vinny Hurtado with the ball from the left wing. Threads it underneath. That's over to Mo Wilson. Mo Wilson with the touch off the glass. And Moza Wilson has had some opportunities underneath the paint. You typically see some of the plays he's running played by some big guys, but the freshman has been doing good. A steal by the Vikings. Marshawn Smith straight to the hole. Right-handed shot off the glass. Up and good, and it's a 10-point game. Marshawn Smith with four points now. Finishing my point, Mo Wilson. It's only 5'11", 175, but he's gotten a lot of action underneath the basket, almost like he's playing the big spot there. And the little big man helps make the drive happen, and Marshawn Smith gets the exclamation point, forcing a timeout out of the pocket of the Contra Costa Comets. So after about 10 minutes of play, we're back to a 10-point game here as the Comets 67, the Vikings 57, here on DVC Vikings Live. Ten oh two on the clock here. And for the Vikings, it'll be Marshawn Smith alongside Kai Curry, Mo Wilson, Vinny Hurtado, and Cole Webster, the last man on the floor for the Vikes, working right to left under 10 minutes to play here. And the ball handler in this unit will be Joseph Gold. He'll be joined alongside Allison, McLean, Prime Payton, and the big inside is Christopher Sanders. 15 seconds left on the shot clock here. A deep three-point shot taken by Caleb Allison. And a saving and a diving attempt by Sanders. And Sanders takes a hard fall into the floor. And I think we're going to get a flopping foul. Flop against zero. So the flop will be called against Caleb Allison as he kicked out his legs on the three-point attempt. So that flop will result in free throws for the Vikings. So this should be a... One shot technical foul taken by Vinny Hurtado and the Vikings should get the ball back. And that is a huge opportunity as Hurtado goes to the free throw line. Vinny only a 50% free throw shooter on the year but he is a good free throw shooter overall. And that is something that was implemented a couple of years back now as I think it's a very good thing that you have inside the game. No rewarding guys like James Harden and the technical free throw is unfortunately missed by Vinny Hurtado. It's his first attempt of the game. And so possession will go back to the Vikings on the other side of the floor. So about 94 feet away from the basket, the Vikings will inbound it and Curry will run the set. 9.34 remaining from the right elbow. A pass over to Hurtado. Hurtado underhand swing to Marshawn Smith. Acts like he's going for three instead. Straight to the cup. Unable to fill the cup as it is a Defensive foul called against Prime Payton. Trying to draw the charge and instead hits the deck and sends Marshawn Smith to the free throw line. Smith, a 50% free throw shooter as well. And more importantly than anything, that's the 10 on the board against the Comets. 10, so the Vikings will essentially get free throws, two of them, for the rest of the game. Rattling out the first attempt was Marshawn Smith, so he's 0 for 1 on the evening. And Caleb Allison gives CCC 10 points per game will be replaced by Mikey Pierce, which is not a good night for him. First free throw missed, an opportunity to cut it down to single digits here as the second free throw rattles out again. 10 point game is still the, the score here as it's 67 to 57. 
Rebounded by McLean and now quickly ahead over to Gold. Gold back over to McLean. McLean driving down Broadway instead, kicks it out to the corner. Pierce for three. Air ball, Marshawn Smith with the board, trying to go coast to coast. Smith a little loose with the handle, drops it off and it's knocked away. I think he might have tried to drop it off to Webster at the last moment, but instead an opportunity for Prime Payton to take a three. Instead, a feed inside, the bounce pass to McLean. And McLean has 12. And it's a 12 point game at the 849 mark here for the Comets. Pardo and Teas to the table. Hurtado with the crossover to Curry. Curry from 14 feet out, and Curry with the midi. He's got 13. Kai Curry's a guy that only gives you 3.2 points per game, so he's been a huge scorer for the Vikings as it's back to a 10-point game. Joseph Gold working to the right wing. He'll dribble. Now crosses over. And a reach in on Mo Wilson. Seventh foul on Mo on the team, and Mo will pick up his third. Moza Wilson will send the Comets to the free throw line for a one and one. Cavalry comes in for the Vikings and it'll be in the form of Webster, I believe. Or no, it's Pardo and Teas. So Pardo, Teas, alongside Webster. Curry staying in the game, alongside Hurtado into the game. So two point guards in Hurtado and Curry. Two shooting guards, essentially, and Teas, who actually play the three in this situation. And Lorenzo Pardo, actually, it's a very small lineup as the first free throw is up and made. So it'll be, I think the way it's going to be is Hurtado's going to run the point alongside Kai Curry. The three will be Pardo, the four will be Teas, and the five will be Webster. First free throw was made by Gold. That's his first of the game. He's got 13. Misses the second one, though. So it's an 11-point game. Sprinting is Curry. The shuffle to Pardo. Pardo for three. Doesn't get the shot to drop, but Pierce was in the landing vicinity of Pardo. And Pardo, whose only points have come from the free throw line, will have an opportunity to shoot three. Lorenzo Pardo has been such a good outside shooter this year. 53% on the year, but just hasn't quite been able to find his stroke in this evening. But he will have an opportunity to try to cut it down from 11. First free throw, no good. More missed free throws for the Vikings are continually hurting them. And Pardo is two for three from the line tonight now. Second free throw attempt is good. Lorenzo Pardo with three points now. And if Pardo can get going in this late going at the 8-12 minute mark, it'll be huge. One for two, Hurtado tips it away. And Robinson able to get the rebound after the flick. Joseph Gold pressured heavily by Kai Curry. Curry reaches in, but no call. A crossover gets past Curry and a hand on the hip. That'll be a bad foul. The eighth on the Vikings, and Kai Curry will pick up his second. Kai Curry, number two, picks up his third personal. Joseph Gold just went to the free throw line, and now he'll have an opportunity to get two more attempts. Substitution for the Vikings here. Vinny Hurtado comes out. In comes Michael Wood. So a three big look just like that. So the Vikings go from one of their smaller units and into a bigger unit now. So it'll be Teas alongside Pardo, Wood, Marshawn Smith, and Cole Webster will be the final man here as the first of the one and one is good by Gold. He's got 14, two for three from the line. So in this set, Pardo should be running the point. Teas should slide over to the two. And then the three will be played by Smith. Webster at four and, and Wood at five. Second free throw, up and out. Misses it is Gold, so he's two for two from the line now. It's an 11 point game here at the 750 mark. Between the legs, dribble for the big man inside for the Vikings and Wood. And now a pass over to Webster, and Webster is fouled. Sanders picks up his fourth, and he'll send Webster to the free throw line to shoot two. Cole Webster, a 56% free throw shooter. Ben Teo is talking to the coaching staff on the far sideline, Irv Anderson, giving a sophomore guard some pointers there. And Webster, once again, trying to cut it down into single digits. First free throw, nothing but net. A perfect swish by Webster, as Webster is three for three from the free throw line now. 
substituting as Sanders as he's got four fouls. So it will be Gold, Pierce, Amari Robinson alongside Watts. And the last man as the second free throw is missed is McLean. Ball's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Vikings. Webster, three for four from the line. He's got seven points. And at the 7.38 minute mark, he will inbound from the right side of the baseline. Instead, Marshawn Smith comes out to the corner. Right side corner for Smith. Eyes down. Pokes inside over to Cole Webster. And Tejas will fire from three. Side of the iron, miss. And just better positioning by the comments, being able to get that rebound. Rebound was brought in by Robinson. Robinson off the fingertips, almost loses the ball. He's trapped alongside the right wing and a foul. These whistles have came out very quickly tonight. And as the ninth on the Vikings, second on Smith. And another one-on-one -on -one opportunity, Amari Robinson getting his first free throw attempt of the game, or of the season, I should say. Only two for four on the year so far. First free throw is good, so he's 100% on the year. Amari Robinson has played in all four games of this season, or four of the five games, I should say, this season, but hasn't really gotten too much burn. Back to 11, and Robinson, the freshman guard. Will stroke it two times from the line. Robinson with two points, and it's back to a 12-point game. Clock is counting down, 7.15 remaining. Vikings just have not shot well from beyond the arc, and they've been a little sloppy on the defensive assignment. As a foul be called as Bentea spun around the baseline, and it will go against Watts. Watts picking up his second. But really how we've gotten to this point is the fact that the Vikings have not really gotten back on defense. They fouled quite a lot early on and just the activity of the comments, it looks like they have the freshest legs. I mean, realistically, both teams haven't played in quite a while. 10 days for the Vikings as the first free throw is up by Ben Teas, up and good. He's got 20 points now. Uh, 10 days off for the Vikings, only eight days off for Contra Costa College, but it's really just been sluggish for the Vikings. They got in foul trouble early on. They had to fight back from that. And now Tejas trying to cut it back down to 10 with 7.08 remaining. The stroke is good for Tejas, and Ben Tejas is 6 for 6 from the line. He's got 21 now. Vikings springing the pressure, and Lorenzo Pardo knocks it out of bounds. Trapped inside of the backcourt for just a moment was gold. And now the ball went out of bounds right in front of us. Vinny Hurtado will come back in in replacement of Lorenzo Pardo. And inbounding is McLean. McLean bounces it inbounds over to Gold. And Gold from the left wing. A crossover. The spin. The kick out. Pierce doesn't take the three instead. Jumps inside. Gets caught up in the air but able to fight through the contact and get the shot to drop. Leading score for the Comets with 17. Mikey Pierce. Hurtado to Smith, Smith, 4-3, Marshawn Smith from deep. It's back to a nine-point game. First time in the second half that the Vikings have cut it down to single digits. Marshawn Smith doing so with the deep ball. Floater inside, the bucket is good for Amari Robinson, and he gets the foul. Elijah Keyes sends him to the free throw line. That'll be the third on Keyes, and it's back to 11, and a three-point play opportunity here. For Robinson. Robinson. Two for two from the free throw line on the last one and one opportunities. Gets his first actual basket on the floor of the game. Only his third made basket of this season. And now a very small lineup for the Vikings here as the Bigs take the bench. It's essentially four guards and Elijah Keyes, who's only a 6'4 forward. Vikings need a. They're going to send the pressure now. Free throws up in in. Amari Robinson, five points now. And the Vikings in essentially a four guard look will work at the 622 minute mark. Ben Teas is guarded by Mikey Pierce. Teas steps into a straightaway three. Front of the iron miss and rebounding is going to be a difficult thing to do as Peyton, or pardon me, that's Robinson gets the rebound for the comments. You got some strong rebounding guards, but just the sheer size advantage with the small lineup on the floor is going to hurt you. And Mo Wilson is just in shock that they called a foul on the play. 
Moselle Wilson picks up his fourth of the game. Amari Robinson has taken over the latter part of this second half so far. Just earning his points from the stripe, showing some physicality for the freshman guard. And more importantly than anything, able to actually knock it down when he gets to the free throw line, four for four. For a guy that hasn't had any free throw attempts in the year, Mo Wilson takes a seat. Marshawn Smith in the game for the Vikings. And for a guy who hasn't taken many free throw shots this year or any previous to this point, Amari Robinson has been a huge factor in this latter part. Misses the free throw there, so he's four for five now. And Marshawn Smith from the right wing fires the three ball. Elijah Keyes fights for the ball. Ben Tejas tries to save it, but saves it into a steal from Pierce. Robinson loose with the handle. The reverse, and Keyes with the strong rebound. Flicks it over to Tejas as Tejas will be credited with the rebound after the fact. 5.37 remaining here in this 13-point game. Vikings quickly cut it down to nine, but the Comets have answered with two scores of their own. Ball's poked away, and a foul called against Mikey Pierce. Second foul against Pierce, and he'll send Ben Tejas to the free throw line. Tejas six for six in this early going, leading scorer of the game with 21 points. And the Vikings need every single point up to this point as the possessions are counting down here with 528 left in the second half. Ten fouls on both sides, so both teams in the double digits. But the Vikings are the team that needs to stop the clock and get some points here, trailing by double digits. Free throw up and in, Ben Tejas, seven for seven, 22 points. Ben has been a monster scorer and he's been keeping the Vikings in this game alongside the 13 points by Kai Curry. Looks short coming out of his hands, but Ben Tejas finds a way to get it in. Swishes the basket and he's eight for eight from the line. Back to an 11 point game. Kimbrough checks back into the game for the comments and he runs the second unit. Robinson working against Marshawn Smith. Denied of the ball, McLean spinning inside the lane, a drop off and a 16 footer from the inside of the top of the key is taken by Watts and Watts misses the shot. Ball thrown ahead to Smith. Smith being pressured alongside the right corner. Four minutes and 54 seconds remaining. Vikings run the set with Kai Curry. Taps the top of his head to call the play. Kai Curry drifting to the left wing, a handoff over to Ben Tejas. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Feeds inside over to Keyes. Two different defenders run into each other, and the Vikings able to capitalize on that mischief as Kai Curry slashes to the hoop and gets two more points to give him 15 on the night. It's nine point. It's a nine point game now. Back into a single digit deficit. Vikings trying to fight back and come back against their four CD rival here. Trying to answer the calls, Robinson who misses the three. Quickly had his Curry. Curry reverses back alongside the right wing. Doesn't take the three as Tejas. Tejas inside, gets inside of the paint. Throws up the floater and the J from 14 feet out is good. It wasn't a floater, it was a step back J. And Ben Tejas has 25 points. Vikings cutting the lead back down and it's 79-72 here. As the Comets lead the Vikings with 4.02 remaining in the second half of play here on DVC Vikings Live. Seven point game here as the Vikings trail the Comets. This is the closest it's been in the second half of play. The Comets fought back, they got it up to 16 or 18 points at one point. 
But the Vikings have clawed down to seven here with 4.02 remaining. Both teams in the double bonus with 10 fouls plus a piece. And the Vikings will send out Vinny Hurtado, Marshawn Smith, Ben Tejas, Kai Curry, and Elijah Keyes. On the other end, it's McLean. Join alongside Gould, who has the ball crossing midcourt here. He's with Pierce, who has the ball from the right wing, firing away from three, overshoots it, rebounded in by Keyes. And the last two are Watts. And lastly, it's Clark. Ball's on the ground. It's turned over. Vikings cannot afford any of these turnovers in this situation. A wasted opportunity on the other side of the floor as we count down inside of three minutes and 30 seconds to play. Marshawn Smith on ball defense against Gold. Gold with just a way too easy opportunity at the basket. 16 points from Gold. And nearly all of them have come in a similar fashion, either running down the floor quicker than the Vikings or slashing to the rack and no inside help by the bigs. Tejas tries to answer from three, rattles in! The shot is happening for Tejas, he's got 28. And man, it's felt like he hasn't really even missed a shot here in the second half of play to a six point game now. Technically a two possession game here as Gold looks to answer. Curry defending Mikey Pierce. Pierce drops it off to the left wing. It's McLean. McLean throws inside. And Watts gets the basket over Marshawn Smith. Insult to injury. The foul against Smith. Watts two for three from the free throw line. And substitutions here for the Vikings now. Swap of the bigs. Wood and Webster come back in. And an opportunity to get the three the old school way for Watts. Free throws in. Three for four. Watts has nine points. It's back to a nine point game. Tejas driving the baseline. Rebound brought in by Clark as Tejas left it short. Trying to extend it to double digits. No look pass. And oh, that's a bad call by the official. Watts was inside the lane. A fine block by Cole Webster. And unfortunately for the Vikings, it will send Watts to the line once more. Fourth foul against. I believe that's actually the third against Cole Webster. And two opportunities from the free throw line for Watts. And in this situation, it just looks like the clock is starting to tick down and the Vikings might not have enough opportunities left in this one. Five free throws taken, four made by Watts. He's in double digits now with 10 points. Mikey Pierce comes out, back in Jamil Harris. He's got four fouls. Left-handed dribble, the left-handed shot. In the bottom of the net, cup was filled, 11 points now for Watts. Vikings need to score and score in bunches. And a drive down the right side of the lane by Kai Curry will be exactly what the doctor called for. He's got 17. And it's back down to a nine point game. It's Gold. Now it's Harris. Right elbow for Watts. Back over to Harris, left side of the lane. Clears some space inside and gets the basket to go. 12 points for Harris. Tejas down 11, double clutches. Leaves it short, offensive rebound by Wood. Wood goes up on his own. And Michael Wood with a huge basket here. Gets his first shot to drop in the game. It's a nine point game now at the 11.38 minute mark. So in theory, the Vikings could come back in a three three point attempt effort here. I mean, they're down nine in a situation where they are in the double bonus. So I think what Coach Irv Anderson is talking about in this situation is just you need to spring onto the ball. You need to trap the ball handler initially. The moment he gets the ball and you need to force turnovers as soon as possible. Vikings not technically out of it, but this is a very uphill battle in this situation. The latter part of this second half of play has 
been the Vikings just teetering in on this double digit disadvantage here as it's currently at nine points. But for the most part, it's just been the hustle of CCC making plays happen. Running the baseline, inbounding is McLean, and McLean throws it away. Nope, ball will stay with the Comets. It was tipped off the fingertips of the Vikings. Shifting the ball here, only one second off the shot clock here. McLean to inbound from the right side of the baseline. McLean needs to get the ball away, and a timeout taken by Miguel Johnson. A good timeout by Miguel Johnson as McLean was along the sideline. He almost got a five-second violation. Another timeout here, and we'll take this one. 88-79 to 79 with 137 remaining here in this second half of play here on DVC Vikings Live. Back here at the DVC Palladium on this Saturday night hoop session here. And the Comets of Contra Costa College have the lead over the Vikings, 88 to 79. And the inbounder will change to Lonnie Clark to inbound it from the sideline. Cole Webster in front of him, doing jumping jacks, finally throws it inbounds over to Gold. And Gold is fouled the moment he touched the ball. That'll be the fifth on Mo Wilson. So Mo Wilson out of the game. So Mo will have to check out. Ben Teas will replace him. Some quality minutes by Mo tonight. Five points. One for two from the free throw line. But more than anything, just serving as that drop-off man underneath the basket. He's only 5'11", or I think he's listed at 5'11". I'm not sure he quite meets that mark, but playing some of that little big man role tonight. Gold to the free throw line. He's two for four as he's able to swish that first free throw, giving him 17 on the night. 17 for Pierce, 17 for Gold, and the leading scorer of the game, 28 for Teas. 10 point game here, both the free throws are in. And Gold has 18. Four for six as Lorenzo Pardo comes back in. Lorenzo Pardo only with three points on the night. One of the main scores for the Vikings in a general sense but just hasn't quite been able to find his game tonight. Got to the free throw line a few different times, but that's been one of the big aspects. Webster with the drop off. Webster jumps up and he's straight to the hole. Failing the cup at the 120 minute mark and it's back to a nine point game. Full court press for the Vikings here. Six seconds left to get across them. The strike, Gold passes over to Sanders and the ball goes into the hands of Clark. Fighting on the ball, he's not fouling yet, and Pardo finally fouls Joseph Gold. Gold came into this game a 70% free throw shooter, and he's around that mark tonight. To the scorer's table, Mikey Pierce for the comments, and Michael Wood for the Vikings. Vikings setting up inside of the backcourt as they'll likely just have to lob this ball ahead after the first free throw drops from Joseph Gold. Michael Wood is 20. Michael Wood comes in for Lorenzo Pardo. So it's Pardo, all right, so pardon me, it's Hurtado, Cole Webster, Wood, Curry, and Tejas all alone on the other side of the floor. Free throws missed, Wood with the rebound, handed off over to Curry, and Curry sprints on the floor inside of one minute to play here. Down nine, Curry trying to go straight to the cup. And he's blocked out of bounds. Ball will stay with the Vikings here at 57 seconds remaining, down 10. Uh, Offense for Disa and substitution here. Wood came in, got the rebound as needed. And Hurtado triggers from the left side of the baseline. Throw ahead over to Benteas. And Benteas from NBA range. No good. Heel of the iron, miss. And just standing there proud as Clark. Clark got the rebound. Vikings foul. And it will go against Vinny Hurtano, his second of the game, but yep, yeah, that's just one of those situations where the Vikings came out flat tonight. 
Second half, they tried to fight, they tried to come back. And they did a good opportunity getting into the double bonus very early on with over 10 minutes to play here in the second half, but just haven't been able to capitalize as the first free throw by Jelani Clark found money for the Commons tonight is up and in. Marshawn Smith replaces Lorenzo Pardo. And Clark, the sophomore guard, goes up for the second. Two free throws for Jelani Clark. And it's a 12-point lead here at 50.1 seconds left. Vikings will continue to fight to play this one out to the very end. Kai Curry picks the ball up midcourt. Kai Curry straight to the hoop again. And Kai Curry is so quick off the jump. Back to a 10 point game here and a timeout taken. I believe this one is against the Comets here. 46.5 seconds left. It's nearly academic at this point, but we'll play it out to the end. That's what happens in a rivalry game. All right. And take the time and alongside with them here, 46.5 seconds remaining here on DVC Vikings Live. Lorenzo Pardo and Michael Wood check back in for the Vikings. It's Curry, Marshawn Smith, Cole Webster, Michael Wood, and Lorenzo Pardo for the Vikings. On the other side, it is Sanders joined alongside McLean, Joseph Gold, who's gotten quite a few free throw attempts in this ladder going. Pierce and the inbounds man will be Jamil Harris. So the starters on the floor for the Comets to close this one out. Inbounds pass goes over to Pierce. Pardo has the ball in his hands. But I believe the foul will go against Marshawn Smith. Two men right on slot alongside the baseline as they trap Mikey Pearson. They will call it against Pardo instead. Pardo picks up his second and two opportunities from the line to continue to pound up his point total. Mikey Pierce came into the game 100% from the free throw line and he's three for four. Misses that one. Now he's three for three for six. Vinny Hurtado back in. Second free throw gives the 18th point over to Mikey Pierce. Curry slings it to Hurtado. Hurtado gets it knocked away. And Hurtado fouled right at the basket. Hurtado will go to the free throw line. First time seeing up the line since the missed technical free throw earlier. Hurtado missed the shot at the rack, but he'll have an opportunity to earn it from the stripe. As Hurtado goes to take the first free throw. Miguel Johnson will have the opportunity to talk to his team, the longtime head coach here of the Comets. And the Comets on path to get their first victory of this season. 0-5 coming to this game against the Vikings. 2-3, some really tough matchups against some solid teams. A loss against Butte in a single digit, or in a two-point loss. Couple point loss over to Siskiyous. A close one against LA Southwest. And the second free throw is missed by Vinny Hurtado. Hurtado, not much success, under 50% from the free throw line so far this season. Anybody to get his first free throw to drop here at the 36.4 second mark. Hurtado's got three. Inbounds pass to McLean. McLean sprinting down the middle of the floor, has the ball poked away. Pardo gets the steal. Pardo throws it ahead, and that's a travel. That's a double dribble, they'll call it. Pardo had the ball 
knocked into the air. It didn't seem like he actually had possession of the ball before throwing it back to himself, essentially. But the officials will call this one a double dribble. So another turnover on the Vikings. Don't have the official stat as Ben Tejas will come to the game for Pardo. Ben Tejas returns with 28 points. Inbounding from the near sideline is Clark. Clark throws ahead over to Gold. Gold inside of the backcourt. Has the ball knocked away. Able to keep it in his hands was Gold. And Gold just spins around. Burning clock, 18 seconds left. And a foul, Mikey Pierce was hit. Benteas picks up his second. Ten point game here. Extra points for the window dressing as the Vikings will fight through in this rivalry game all the way to the end. Pierce with 19 points. They about to drop in the eighth free throw attempt of the game. Misses the second as it's rebounded in by Cole Webster. Teyes from the corner. Teyes has his three-point shot blocked. The ball will be sprung ahead. Over into the hands of Clark. And Clark driving down the baseline. Won't take the shot. Instead, he'll dribble the clock out. Technically a travel at the end. But at the one-second mark, you're not going to call that one. So at the end of 40 minutes of play, DVC will drop to two and four on the year, and Contra Costa will go to one and five on the year. So finally a victory for the Comets of Contra Costa College. And it's a rivalry game, and on rivalry weekend, you never know what you'll get. We've seen close scores all across the board and on the gridiron and on the hardwood floor. The team from San Pablo, the other member of the 4CD, takes the victory. Vikings drop to two and four on the year, one and one at home, one and one away. All right, I don't think I updated that stat, but yeah, they were one and one, one and oh at home previous to this point, and they'll drop to two and four on the year. And the issue tonight has been fouling one, turnovers two, and more than anything, just being out hustled. Too many times tonight we saw the Comets cherry pick ahead or just go inside of the lane uncontested for some wide open points and it's just been a tough one. So we will return in a couple days. The next game will be against another three, um, a four CD rival in LMC. So that game will be at 11.20 or on 11.28. That's a Tuesday. I'm not sure the tip off as of right now, but we will have our broadcast up and live about 30 minutes to the point. Uh, let's give you some final scores for the end of the night. Benteas leads the game with 28 points. Then had a terrific night. In the losing effort, Kai Curry, the other Viking in double digits with 19 points. And Keyes had a pretty solid night himself with six points and a few different rebounds underneath on the other side. Pierce had 19 points alongside Gould's 18 points, 12 from McLean, 12 from Harris, 11 from Watt. So scoring came in bunches from a bunch of different players for the Comets tonight. And the group effort leads the victory for the Comets. So our final score here, 95 to 84 here at the DVC Palladium. And we'll see you in a couple days as the Vikings drop to two and four, looking to get one back against LMC on Tuesday. So. Until next time, thank you so much to Brian Crow for running our camera, to Ryan Shell for running our scoreboard on the camera tonight. My name is Max Agres, bringing you the action of Vikings basketball all year long here on DVC Vikings Live. As always, Vikings fans, horns up!